Jerry here from Platform One MRC. 24 hours ago or so, I posted up a video on creating your own photographic back scenes for your model railway. Now that was uh, received pretty pretty well. Although I had one um, one question from Steve 87 PSAP, and he asked me, can the poster or the back scene be printed off at home? using post razor in your home printer? And the simple answer is yes. Now his question, he raised that question because he goes, some people out there in the modeling world are in remote locations and they may not be able to get to a print shop. So I'm gonna do a quick tutorial here on how we go about uh, collating the images into post razor so you can print them off at home. So first up, we will open up post razor. There we go there and we will bring up an image I'm just going to enlarge that for you now top right hand corner over here we have the file I will be using the same image that I used in yesterday's video or the last video which is tutorial cropped open there we have the image there Bottom right hand corner of the screen, go down to next, to step two. Now this up here is your uh, paper format, portrait or landscape. I'm going to actually keep it as portrait for this purpose. Stage three of five. This is your over overlapping line uh, that you can see around here in red. Now you can have it any side you want. Uh, I'm going to leave it on the top right hand corner because once you've printed this out you want to be able to glue it down onto your back scene board whether that be foam core, MDF, masonite, ply, whatever. Now what the red line allows you to do is to overlap the next image onto that red line there. Although once it's printed it won't be a red line, it will be just a white line where the image hasn't been printed. It'll give you a really good reference point for squaring up all your images, all your individual images. So at the moment, we're gonna keep it at the uh, top right and we'll go down to the bottom right hand corner here, hit next again. There's the image there. I will keep the image at 500 mils high by 2862 long. All up 28 images. What I will show you, I'm going to go back a couple of steps to our paper format and I'm going to put the uh, back scene into landscape. Landscape mode tends to use a bit more paper. There we have it there. We've actually used 30 sheets of paper. Okay, it's only two more sheets of paper than the 28, but there's a lot more waste down the bottom here. You know, you can imagine every three uh, sections here that are wasted is going to equate to roughly two sheets of A4 so one sheet, two sheets, three sheets, four sheets it's not a great deal but hey you might be shy on paper um, the other alternative or the, the better benefit of printing it into uh, portrait mode is there is less gluing because each one of these red lines here as you can imagine, is a glue line. So I'm going to go back and we're going to put it into portrait mode again. Back to next and next again to bring it up to where we are. And there we have it. And bottom right hand corner, hit next. Now you remembered yesterday that I mentioned the launch mode. Now the box up here, you can tick that box to save it. Hit the grey box here, which is like a little it looks like an old floppy disk actually so we'll hit that save that i'm actually going to call this pbs3 uh post eraser back scene 3 now don't worry about this one up here it's from a faulty video i done earlier and we're going to hit save straight away once that saves it'll open a new page on your on your screen 
I'll just reduce that from 127% down to 100% to give you an idea what it's going to look like. These images are now all in order when you go to print them. There is no numbers on them, you just have to lay them out as they print out. So you'd start at top left, move across to the right, and I'm going to come down beyond halfway. Now we're going to, see, as you can see, the tree here, we're going to go from right to left. A bit more tree there, sorry, there we go. And it continues through. Through, through the cornfields, what have you, and continues on. I think to the left hand side of the frame or the image you could say so there they all are there now I don't know if you can see that but that image is rather pixelated on my screen I can imagine it could be worse on your screen because I'm filming this uh, actually filming my screen onto my phone and then you're going to view it on your screen at home anyway so what I will do I'm going to go up here to the print mode up here we're going to double click that just to give you a, uh, an idea of what it's going to look like on an, on the uh, A4 sheet. Now I'm going to move that up to just beyond halfway so we get a bit of a, yep, a lower scene, foreground scene. It doesn't look too bad. I will post up a larger image of what we have here for you so you can see what the image actually looks like and you can see the graininess. So there's the image there for you. Now I'm gonna close this down, because you can see that, we've saved that, and I'm gonna close this down as well, back to here. One thing I will say, once you have printed your back scene out, your 28 sheets or whatever it may be, depending on the size of your actual back scene, once it's glued down, get yourself some artist sealer, some matte sealer, um, preferably matte rather than gloss or uh, satin, and give your back scene at least three light coats. What that will do will protect your back scene image. It will also stop the image from uh, being affected by water or PVA when you're doing a little bit of scenery. Hypothetically, you might want to be taking scenery up to this scene here. You know, a ground foam, static grass or whatever. And as we know, if you're printing on an inkjet printer, anything like PVA glue or white glue and a little bit of water like your ballast mix will affect the image and cause runs. So please uh, seal your image first before you actually fix it to your layout. You may have had your scenery already done, but it's a good idea to throw your back scene up and blend your scenery back into your back scene to give a transition. It'll make it much smoother, more realistic. Anyway, I hope that's helped you guys out. I'm just gonna close this down. I'd like to thank Steve87PSAP for the question. Um, it's questions like this that uh, prompt me to make more videos and update the videos to help you guys out there. So I, I, I regard that as uh, constructive criticism, much appreciated. Um, please keep the questions coming. If you don't know, you'll never know unless you ask the question. So, Please ask away. Um, if I can't help you, I'm sure there's somebody that can. Anyway, there's your update or part two on producing a photographic back scene for your model railway. So, that wraps it up. As normal, take care, stay safe, and keep on modelling. Cheers, Gary.